Congratulations on purchasing your Klipsch Low Control App Compatible Subwoofer. In this video, we will explain how to use the app to optimize the performance of your new Klipsch Sub. To download the app to your phone or tablet, go to the iTunes App Store for Apple devices or the Google Play Store for Android devices. Search Klipsch Low Control. The app will appear in the results field. Click on the app to download. The Klipsch Low Control app will automatically connect to your subwoofer if you are in the same room. Ensure your subwoofer is plugged in and powered on. Next, open the app. All of the compatible Klipsch subwoofers in the room will appear on the home page. The home page consists of three sections. The top section shows all of the Klipsch Low Control compatible subwoofers that are connected to the Low Control app. The EQ mode section contains six different EQ presets. Flat applies no EQ preset at all. Cinema mode optimizes the EQ and limiter settings for movies and TV shows. Music mode optimizes the EQ and limiter settings for listening to music, while night mode adjusts the EQ and limiter settings to minimize the disturbances from the subwoofer into neighboring rooms. User 1 and User 2 are user assignable banks in which you can save parametric EQ settings manually entered into the app. More on this later. At the bottom of the page, you'll notice a gain slider. This will adjust the master volume of all subwoofers in the room. To adjust the gain of individual subwoofers, simply click on the arrow to the right of the slider. This will bring up individual sliders for each connected subwoofer. To make EQ, phase, or other changes to a specific subwoofer, select that subwoofer from the list of devices in the app. This will bring you to the parameter page, which shows all of the different parameters you can adjust within the app. At the top of the parameter page, you'll find the name of the subwoofer you've selected. You can change the name of this subwoofer by simply clicking on the pencil and an edit window will appear. If you have multiple subwoofers in the room, we recommend giving each of them a name that will signify their position in the room. The first section on the parameter page is the input section. While all inputs on the subwoofer are active, this will allow you to select which line input you'd like the subwoofer to use. This will depend on your source. If using an unbalanced RCA source, select RCA. If using a balanced source with XLR input, select XLR. If using both from two different sources, select Auto. This will automatically switch to the input getting the signal. Below the input section, you will see four trim sliders. These allow you to adjust the input level for each input on the subwoofer. This can be quite useful to balance the level of the inputs, as different sources typically have different output levels. This will keep you from needing to adjust the master subwoofer level when you switch from one input to another. The next section down is the EQ section, starting with the auto EQ function. This will automatically tune your subwoofer to your specific room. To use it, click on the Auto EQ section. The app will then ask you to hold your phone or tablet next to the subwoofer as shown. Click the Go button. The subwoofer will then run a sign sweep while the app takes measurements through the microphone on your device. Once this is complete, the app will ask you to sit at the central listening position in the room. Hit the Go button again. The subwoofer will run another sign sweep while the app takes measurements. Once completed, the app will automatically adjust the EQ on the subwoofer to account for dips or peaks that are caused by your room. If at any time you'd like to turn off the EQ setting derived by the auto EQ, simply turn the auto EQ enabled feature to off. To manually adjust the EQ settings, select parametric EQ. This will open an EQ page with five bands of parametric EQ, allowing you to adjust the EQ setting of your subwoofer using center frequency, bandwidth, and gain. The gray line denotes the total EQ curve of all five bands, while the copper line shows the EQ curve of just the selected band. By turning pink noise on, the subwoofer will play pink noise while you adjust the EQ. Once you've set the EQ to your liking, you can save it to one of the EQ presets by pressing the Save icon in the top right corner. 
choose which bank you'd like to use, and click Save. Note, by saving to the Music or Cinema Bank, you will overwrite the factory provided preset. In order to restore the factory preset, you will need to reset the subwoofer to its factory default. The next section will allow you to adjust low pass filter, phase, and delay for your subwoofer. Before we dive into these settings, note that if you turn on the advanced control feature, it will allow you to control these parameters for all of the inputs. If you leave advanced control off, you will only see these parameters for the input you are currently using. For this video, we'll keep advanced control off. To adjust the low pass filter or crossover, select low pass filter. This will allow you to adjust the crossover frequency from 40 Hz to 150 Hz. Set the crossover frequency to the appropriate frequency for your system. Typically, this will be around 80 Hz. The drop down menu below the frequency slider will allow you to choose a filter slope for the crossover. A 6 dB per octave slope will be more gradual, while a 24 dB slope will be steeper. Listen to each of these settings and select the one that sounds the best and most seamless with your system. The phase section will allow you to select the phase of your subwoofer from negative 180 to 180. To ensure the best phase correlation with the rest of your system, sit in the listening position and listen to the entire system with the subwoofer. Slide the phase slider up and down slowly until you hear the best bass performance. The position of the slider at this point will be the best setting for your particular system and room. If needed, the Invert Polarity button will raise and lower the selected polarity of your subwoofer by 180 degrees. The Delay slider will delay the output of the subwoofer by up to 20 milliseconds. This is useful if your subwoofer is closer to you than the rest of your system and you need the sound to arrive at the same time. Again, this can generally be adjusted by ear. You can adjust the power mode and LED behavior of your clipped subwoofer by selecting Power Mode. The Power Mode drop-down menu at the top will give you the options Auto and Ethernet. Auto will automatically turn the subwoofer on when it detects a signal. The subwoofer will turn off automatically when no signal is detected. Ethernet should only be used when utilizing your clipped subwoofer with a control or home automation system. The auto on threshold allows you to adjust the sensitivity of your subwoofer to input signal. If you find that your subwoofer stays on due to extraneous noise in the signal path, simply increase the sensitivity until it is able to automatically turn off. You can also adjust the intensity or brightness of the front panel LED, or you can turn the LED off completely. Lastly, the About section will give you information about your Clipsch subwoofer hardware and firmware. We hope you enjoy the heart-pounding bass your new Clipsch subwoofer provides and the convenience and customization of the Clipsch Low Control app for years to come. For more information on Clipsch products, go to Klipsch.com.